Today we're making stereoscope cards. It's the Allen Show because it stars Allen. Duh! One of my many fond memories of my grandmother centered around the stereoscope. I would sit on her lap and look at 3D images from before the age of cinema of the cavernous terrain in Bali, trains in Brooklyn, tourists driving through redwood trees, recreations of stories from the Bible, and even a series of practical jokes. You can travel around the world with these things, which may not mean a lot in the age of the internet, but you could do it in 3D. I always wanted to create my own stereo cards. My research into this process initially led me to believe that you need a lot of specialized equipment to capture these photos. That simply is not the case. With one camera, some practice, and a little time dedicated to properly aligning and cropping the photos in a software program, you can create picture-perfect stereo cards. Don't believe me? Check out the last step of my instructable on this process for free stereo cards I created with the method I'll cover here. You can find the link in the description along with some tips on composing these photos for beginner and intermediate photographers and how to print these cards at a kiosk. While I used a DSLR, I have also created these cards with my iPod Touch 5. You can really use whatever you have on hand. Here's the basic technique. Stand in front of your subject. Shift your weight to your left foot. Take a picture. Keeping the center of the photo in the center, not panning, tilting, or changing the focus, shift your weight to your right foot. Take a picture. Now you have two images that you can combine. It works for some people to cross their eyes in the combined photos and boom, 3D. But this usually will not work as the images need some editing to be perfectly aligned. There are two basic steps to editing these photos so they will look perfect. First you have to align the photos, then you must crop them. Any photo editing software that allows these two steps will work. As for alignment, find an object in the photo and orient both photos to follow that line. It's that simple. Often I'll put one photo on top of the other and reduce the top photo's opacity and then line up the subject from one side using free transform. Remember it's never going to line up perfectly. If it did it wouldn't be 3D. So don't sweat the alignment or cropping so much that you're left without a photo. As for cropping, after you align the photos, crop a square. You can do this in Photoshop by holding down shift while using the rectangle marquee tool or the crop tool. The classic stereoscopic card is just shy of 7 inches by 3.5 inches. The photos themselves are 3 inches square. Yours don't have to follow these measurements unless you want them to fit in with the rest of your collection. The photos have to fit in the viewer still, so no more than 7 inches wide. But I have a card that is 7 inches wide by 5 inches tall, and I can view it just fine. Now we have to make some choices about how we'd like to print and mount these. The first method is to print the two photos separately. One advantage to doing that is that you can print more cheaply and still have at least 3x3 three three photos. This method creates a rather crafty and personalized feel and it has a few advantages of its own. For instance, you can print taller than 3 inches. While taller cards may not fit into your collection, they can be quite breathtaking. The second method is to design everything, orders and all, in your software. A few advantages to doing this are that it looks pretty smooth and you don't have to fiddle with the alignment of the photos on the cardstock. Just trim off the excess of, say, a 5x7 printed as a landscape and mount to cardstock. This option is also the most potentially expensive, depending on your setup. While it does have a very clean look, it tends to look corporate rather than intimate and homemade. The final option I've tried is to print both photos side by side without a border, trying to fix as many pairs into a print as possible. I recommend trying each way. If you have a photo printer at home, you'll be only limited by your available print sizes, ink, paper, etc. The only other note about printing is that if you have the chance to print in matte, do it. Mounting them is easy once you decide how you'll do it. Use acid-free double-sided tape or photo adhesives to stick them to the back of paperboard. Something like a cereal box is perfect for this. Be sure to line them up right next to each other, with the left on the left and the right on the right. Once mounted, you can write a note on one side identifying the photo or capturing it. And that's how you can make your very own stereo cards. I hope you enjoyed this video. This activity is addictive, and I feel it has uses from kids group like the Scouts or 4-H to professional photographers. I hope you enjoy, and please share what you come up with. You can share your own creations on the Instructables page, link in description, or comment here about how it went. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to shoot in 3D.